In this adventure, I'm heading to Mountain Rest, South Carolina to start a three-day journey on the Georgia Traverse. The plan is to meet up with my buddies Jeff and AJ, then drive to South Carolina and start the Traverse the next day. On day one, we drove nine hours for a total of 118 miles. Our average speed was around 13 miles an hour. The elevation gain for that was 12,351 and the elevation loss was 12,289. One of the best things about the Georgia Traverse is the sense of isolation you can find there. Many of the camping spots are remote and offer a chance to truly disconnect from the world. But don't worry, there are plenty of campgrounds to choose from as well, both designated and non-designated. day two of the trip, we drove right at seven hours for a total of 75.2 miles. Our average speed was a little over 11 miles per hour. The elevation gain was 5,483 feet and the elevation loss was a little over 6,000 feet. The Georgia Traverse is a favorite among off-road enthusiasts, and for good reason. The terrain varies greatly from rocky streams to grand vistas and offers plenty of opportunities for adventure. But it's not just the off-roaders. Hikers, backpackers, and campers also find plenty to love here. On our last day, we drove almost eight hours for a total of 56.1 miles. Our average speed was around seven miles an hour. 
The elevation gain was 6,082 and the elevation loss was 7,842. The Georgia Traverse makes its way through the Nantahala National Forest, the Blue Ridge Mountains, the Chattahoochee National Forest, and the Cahutta Wilderness. Sometimes... <laughs> 
you're planning a trip to the Georgia Traverse, be sure to check out the website Georgia Overland. It has just about everything you need to know to make your journey a success. And don't forget to download the Onyx app. It's a must-have for any off-roading or backpacking trip.